Hello, I'm Rowan Harris, and this is my exciting introduction to our next Towncraft Let's Play. In case you don't already know what this series is, it's where Towncraft's lead designer will go mano a mano with several large carnivores in a small pit, armed only with a Phillips head screwdriver and a bottle of shandy to share with it. Of course, that's a complete lie, apart from the designer part, who is here. And here he is. Hello, and welcome to the River Wild. This is a map that I created uh, about a month or so ago now, and it has this noticeable river in between you and the road where you'll get all your peasants. I also decided to be a little bit mean by putting all the lovely farmland up the top here, and all the useful minerals down the bottom, where there's nothing in the way of vegetation. So the first thing you'll want to do in this map, after going through the usual steps of getting yourself a hatchet and your first woodworking bench, is to find a nice thin area, somewhere narrow like this, so that you don't have to use too much of your precious wood getting from one side to the other. So it's just dragging and dropping wooden planks, which you can make on a woodworking bench to make bridges happen. Once you're on this side, you can start finding a nice place to build your town. You'd want right, to... right away here we can see in the middle of the screen there's a few little specks of iron. Up there is some coal and there's plenty of stone, so this should be fine. Over here we've got plenty of lumber. A bit of blank space here we can use for a farm. And over here we also have birds' nests and beehives, which are going to be necessary for us to grab enough resources to make a beehive box. Beehive boxes are something you can place in the world that will continue to give you an unlimited supply of wax and honeycomb, although it does take time for it to, go, uh, to grow. And the other one is a birdhouse. Birdhouses are made using simply planks and eggs and they will sit there and periodically give you eggs. So as long as we don't spend all of these things at once, we should be in a healthy position there. So, first things first. Stone pickaxe out of a wood pole and small stone. This will allow us to start figuring out what other resources we have over here. Besides just the iron and coal, which are regardless the two most useful substances. We have some more coal there. It's worth bearing in mind that you'll need to get a mine placed next to something that's already exposed. So up here we've got a bunch of exposed coal. So don't mine everything at once, just grab a little bit. And if you find a great and useful little combination, like some iron next to some coal or something like that, then you will be in a very good position. So at the moment it's looking like we're going to need two mines to get our basic coal and iron needs, which is, you know, annoying, but we can get through it. Lots and lots of stone. Gems, that's not a bad find. So again, we'll just leave those gems there. Two bits of coal, but they're not quite close enough to the gems for us to be able to get both with one mine. But you know what? It's worth... I might just take a couple more gems, help get me started. It's worth finding a place, finding enough resources for an extra mine, and even an extra miner just to get the one gems. They're pretty rare, so that's not a bad start. Right, so we can build plenty of houses around here. I'll need to go and grab a little bit of wood to do that. If I ever have to travel any small distance like this, I'll usually use the time to do a bit of crafting. So in this case I can get a furnace ready, and a stone oven, just while I'm on my way over to the trees. But one other thing I can do over here to make my fields a little more fertile, is I can build farms on top of the grassland. I'll create fenced off areas with properly tilled dirt and anything you plant on an actual farm is going to grow a hell of a lot faster than if you just put it on regular grass. If you've got any dirt, it goes in this order. Dirt, grass,
grass like what you can see here, lush grass, which is the deep green colored grass you might have seen in some of the other levels, and then farmland, with crops growing faster and faster, depending on which one you've used. So, let's get this town started. I'm going to place my town stockpile somewhere near the road. As soon as your town rating is increased to shack, that means people will start to come visit. I'll just build my first log cabin here so I've got somewhere to put my crafting tables. Oops, speaking of which, I'll build a crafting table now. Uh, I usually like to put my furnace and crafting table in the first building. And furnace straight away. I just get a bit of everything. Because that should allow me to get round wood, iron bands, and wooden planks, which will give me barrels. Barrels are useful for brewing things, but since we're a little ways off that yet, we can just split them into multiple buckets. Six buckets is not a bad start. And I might as well build myself a second, oops, second log cabin. They always have to be two by two. Into which can go my stone oven. There's another increase, which is nice, and my barrel. So, what else can we do? We had someone ask us a little while ago how to build, how to build a shop out of an existing building. So to do that's actually not that tricky. First thing you need is a counter, which is wooden planks and iron tool bits. Make a couple of those. Now if you wanted to turn this into a bar, for instance, what you would do is grab some sand. Now those little sand dunes, like the one you can see here, you just walk up to them with a bucket and you can get sand, that's not a problem. But another way of doing it, this was actually only added fairly recently, is this little fellow in the bottom right hand corner. It's a quarry. It needs a shovel and some planks. We've already got planks. So to make a shovel, we go wooden poles and iron sheets. Got the shovel. We've now got room for a quarry. Put the quarry down. Town rating is still going on fire. And we can use that for an unlimited supply of sand. And the sand, as many of you might be familiar, can be turned into glass mugs out of fuel. To refuel a furnace, you can either drag coal onto it, like so, or just tap on it, and if you've got fuel, if you've got coal, it'll just work right away. So I get some glass panes going, some glass mugs, and relatively simple, wooden counter plus glass mugs is a bar. We need two more mugs for this to work. We, of course, get our empty buckets back. Head back to the furnace. That'll be as many as we need, and I'll spend the rest on glass panes, which I can use to make lanterns and windows. Now, going back over the water, let's start getting at some of the wax and eggs and honey. The wax will be useful in getting a candle, which will get us our first mine. And while we're on the way, wooden counter, glass mugs, bar. Now in some of these later levels, I've tried to be a little bit tricky with what resources are actually available to you. So you might notice that there are no raw crops hanging around, it's just stone and wood. This is intentional. What I've done is with these maps, I've changed it so that the quests that you get given by people will give you small amounts of the very first crops that you're going to need. So if I'm going to make a shop, for instance, I'm first going to need a set of scales to mix with a counter. I'll just take a shortcut down here. So you get a counter, craft it with a set of scales, and there's your shop counter. It's fairly straightforward, you just place that in a shop and you are good to go. I haven't seen a merchant yet. Hopefully I'll see one soon. So, wax, which we turn into candles. Just a couple of them's fine. Then if we run in here to our crafting table and mix a candle, 
with some glass panes and short iron poles. And there's our lantern. We can get a couple of those right off the bat. Ooh, a quest. If you just tap on a peasant who's walking, he'll stop mm -hmm. to wait for you. Can he pay me to make him a gold necklace? Hmm. Tough one. Tough one, tough one. I don't have any gold, so I'm just going to leave that quest for now. I'm sure there is gold around, but I'd rather pick a quest I know I can work on right away. Let's see what this other peasant has. Two blouses. That is another tall order. Blouses require me to have cotton, which I do not have. These little cacti that are around the place are new as well. We've only just added those. They're only found in this map at the moment. But if you have buckets, they act as a great way to get some water early on. Of course, we can always just build a well using a bucket, some long wooden poles, and some stone. And just remember that anything in the build menu, you can find out very easily what it takes to build it simply by taking a look. So to finish off, oh hello, gold quest. These are one of the ones you need to do to actually complete the mission. Two strong round tables and he'll pay me in pumpkins. That sounds delicious. Strong round tables, okay. So in order to do this, what am I going to need? Long iron poles I've got, round wood I've got, I just need some more iron bands. So I'm still going to be careful not to deplete all the iron that's around here. Even though I didn't leave myself with very much. And I wander back in here, chuck the iron in the furnace, turn it into some iron bands. Then use the round wood, long iron poles, and the iron bands. It looks like I'm going to need a little bit more of the iron poles. Done. Make the second table. And to complete any mission where someone's simply asking you for something like that, all you need to do is go and drop the items off in your town stockpile. Like so. Got some pumpkins, and that will be the first thing that I can plant over on the other side of the river here to get my farm started. And that's a canary. Because canaries. Actually, I think the canary is only in there because the minor character, you've got either the survivalist, which is the red-haired woman that I'm playing now, or the miner. And when we first did concept art for him, he had a little canary on his shoulder. And so we decided to chuck the canary in the game for reasons. So, I'll plant my first farm. And this is the very beginnings of the River Wild. Although it is a rather placid looking river for something called the River Wild, I will grant you that. But waves are very hard to animate, so, you know, leave me alone. Anyway, that concludes my little introduction to the River Wild. So I will leave you with one more thing, although this is experimental. I'm not sure if this is actually going to work. First of all, if you want to pick something up with your inventory open, just press and hold on the item you want, and it just removes it. There we go. It does work. Good. Wasn't sure if I was allowed to turn a log cabin into a bar, but that's all it takes. You just place the bar in the corner. And then you go and select a peasant, offer them a job as a tavern, once I, of course, have two gold coins. So I will leave it there and celebrate the end of this Let's Play by pilfering all of those gems. Thank you very much for watching.